All right, hi. Uh, question one. Uh, I'm stuck on campus for the holidays. What should I do to make it feel more like the holidays? Um, so I would say if you know well in advance uh, that you are going to be by yourself, either in your dorm or your apartment on college, uh, try to figure that out ahead of time and contact people way in advance to see who else is on campus at that time. Kind of get yourself a little bit of a roster uh, going so you have a mindset of who is there. Uh, I cannot say that I have done this so perfectly in the past. Uh, my senior year uh, Thanksgiving, I didn't go home because uh, it wasn't in the cart that year. and. Uh, I didn't really know that ahead of time, and I actually had a bunch of friends who were just around campus, and I didn't know that, because it's kind of a strange message to send out and say, hey, did you go home like 80% of the school, <laughs> or are you magically on campus and conveniently able to hang out? Uh, so what ended up happening is I had a few other college friends that also weren't going uh, home from different schools, uh, so I guess high school friends. And uh, they ended up coming up to visit me, and we had this whole little get-together uh, uh, Thanksgiving weekend in Burlington, where Champlain College is. Um, and it ended up being kind of our own thing. Uh, and it was a different experience. Traditions are kind of what you make them. There's no right or wrong way to do a tradition. So uh, as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think that that's the most important part is when you have this group of friends coming together or you have people coming together, don't don't think that just because you're not with family that you're not with family. Mm -hmm. Your friends are gonna be your family in school. And I know if it's your first year and you're an international kid, yep. that's gonna be difficult, but all the international kids typically are staying on campus during that time and the campus will be hosting an event too. So don't worry about that. The uh, Peter, I don't know. You mentioned all your friends came up. Did you guys all grab different items and like cook a, a big meal together, or how how did that work? Uh, so I can't say we did too much uh, cooking. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we had a Domino's Thanksgiving, oh, uh, there you go. shamefully, <laughs> uh, rest in peace, Cynistics, uh, <laughs> but it was our own thing that we did, and it was so fun, and I have really strong memories of that weekend, and I was really, really grateful that my friends, my good friends from high school were willing to make the drive, and I, I thought it was fun cooking or no cooking, and there's certainly no turkey. Okay. It's not on the menu. Kind of going off what Tyler said with like international students, that can be a weird week, especially with Thanksgiving, because a lot of campuses will just shut down and they're like, you have to go. Um, and only international students are on campus. Uh, that's a good time to like go and find friends and say, oh, hey, you're in the area. You live nearby. Do you think I could go to your house for this holiday? And it's a great cultural experience, very true, yeah. which is what you're looking for when you do internet, like when you're studying abroad. Um, or you're going to a school abroad, um, like fully. Um, I know for us, when I went to study abroad in Dublin, we didn't get Thanksgiving off because it's not a holiday there. Uh, but we still didn't have class the next day, so we all just got together. A bunch of people were like traveling the next morning, but we just did a big potluck. Someone brought hot dogs. We had turkey for dessert because it was cooked late. But it was a really fantastic, like Peter said, a really great memory. Like. I don't remember what I had for Thanksgiving two years ago, but I remember the dessert turkey that I'm going to be talking about forever and ever and ever. <laughs> and it's legendary in the Dublin, and, um, and with Dublin staff too. So like, take that chance to take on the cultural adventure um, of so like immerse yourself. In, yeah, immerse yourself. That's it. Yeah. Immerse yourself in like this new cultural tradition. Like, find someone nearby and just be like, hey, like, what's up, buddy? Um, does your family mind one more for Thanksgiving? Or people who know international students, invite them to your Thanksgiving. Because uh, it really does, it's not great to do, spend the holidays alone. That's uh, just, I didn't even think of that initially mm -hmm. until you said it. We have a family friend that is on, now my wife, I always say girlfriend, but <laughs> uh, her side of the family always had a student from Hong Kong. Uh, it was her brother's friend from college, and he comes up to this day every Thanksgiving. That's awesome. Uh, and it's just, this has become a tradition now. So he's in the States studying for med school still, but every single year he makes the trek up, even if there's a snowstorm, any of that stuff, he comes up. And it's great just catching up with him, and it, it became our, our own tradition, yeah. as you said. And 
immersing himself in our family, which is, is fun. My advice would be no matter what, so if you are having friends come up to visit you, if you are meeting new people, or if you are spending a holiday by yourself, I would just say make the best out of it. So make it really a holiday, decorate, go all out, cook, or, or order some dominoes, whatever your traditions are. Um, stay true to those and really just um, make the most out of that situation and really have fun with it. Yeah, for me personally, we had one year where we decided all that Thanksgiving was a little bit too hectic and family is... Um, Sometimes Family. a little bit too much in the morning, <laughs> and you get those constant uh-huh. questions of, hey, what are you planning on doing when you graduate? And it gets hectic, so we made kind of a bond, a pact to say, hey, let's just stay on campus, mm-hmm. and why don't we do a big potluck? So we were in charge of getting the turkey, and we were hosting it in our apartment. So we ended up buying a turkey, and it was a great process. We had four guys living together. One of the guys had never cooked any. I think his extent is cooking hot dogs and beans. <laughs> Nice. So, well, Isor, you're going to jump in there, you're going to take the gizzard out, and then Logan and I, we're going to do the whole basting process and, and rub it down with herbs and spices and cook it, and then people are going to come over. To this day, one of the best turkeys that we've ever made. I don't know how it came out so good. <laughs> but then everybody else came in. We had mashed potatoes, carrots. Everybody came in. We had probably about 20, 25 people in our apartment, which was too many, but uh, a lot of fun, and I think my favorite is we just put on music at the end of the night and uh, just like goofy dancing, having a good time, and it was uh, one of my favorite Thanksgivings ever, yeah. if not the most yeah. favorite. I don't know, most favorite, I don't think that makes sense, yeah. but uh-huh. the best Thanksgiving. That's another like thing, one. too, is that you might not be like stuck on campus, you might be happy to be on campus, so I, um, my sophomore, junior, and senior years, I went back early after because I I could. Um, So a couple of them I was an RA. So I was like, well, there's like two days after New Year's before training. So I have to be up there early anyway. So I went up for New Year's and I stayed with friends who had an apartment there. And I I had never spent New Year's away from my family before. Like it's always been me with my parents. We have a little party, whatever. I went up and we just like explored Burlington, um, did some fun stuff. Like my friends had a party one year. We just ended up going there. And I was like, this is great. Like, don't be afraid to like change up your traditions um, and you know do that new experience. I mean, one of the it, it's kind of interesting to see your college town too without all the college students. That's and when you're like too. there over winter break, it's kind of it's a little eerie, but it's in a good way. Um, so you know maybe if you're not stuck on campus, but you have the option to go back early because you have friends with an apartment or your campus just like allows you to go back early because it's apartment style or whatever, try that. It's it's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool, um, and you might find new experiences that you like. Yeah, and uh, to I'm not a big decorator. I don't know if anybody in the room is, <laughs> but if you want to talk to that and decorating for the holidays and yeah. different ways you can. Yeah, and especially Christmas is such a big one. Um, Put some roofs on the door, some lights everywhere. It just makes you feel just so happy and just warm inside. Put some Christmas music on. Marie is notorious for playing Christmas music. There is, (laughs) in fact, a sticky note (laughs) on Marie's door right now that says... Playing office Christmas is open. <laughs> I'm playing Christmas music. Feel free to come in because she knows everybody is not in the mood for Christmas music right now. Yeah. Thank you for closing your door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just turned up my, my, my favorite Christmas album today. I'm so excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been listening what's, what's to Christmas music for weeks. Number one, Snow It In by Hanson. Uh, Classic. Hanson. Christmas pop. Christmas pop. <laughs> um, and you could also get a little Christmas tree yeah. up on the corner. Um, and just make it really feel like the holidays. That always makes me happy, yep. being surrounded by um, just the spirit of Christmas. And if you're going to get a menorah, make sure it's battery operated, because candles are not allowed in most college dorms. That's a very good, good thought. Point. Yeah, good definitely. Point. Yeah, no, no lighting candles <laughs> every night. <Yep. laughs> well. teach, teach your Christian friends how to play with the dreidel. It's always fun. Yeah. We get very fun. confused. <laughs> All right, so another idea you can do, too, is gift swapping. So you can have all your friends come up, and you can do a couple of different things. You can have people come up, and you can do the regular, hey, I bought a gift for you, you bought a gift for me, and then do that. Or you can do one of those. There's a white elephant, and then there's the Yankee swap. There's, there's all sorts of different things that are fun. And if you don't know what a white elephant is, because I actually didn't know up until maybe three. Do you not know at all? What is that? What is you, don't, you guys don't know what a white no. elephant is? No. Great. Okay. So <laughs> a white elephant is, 
exactly like a Yankee swap is where you pick a number out mm -hmm. and it rotates all the way around. The person that has number one gets to pick and yep. the, gets to pick first and also last. Mm -hmm. So after all the gifts are given out, they can pick whatever is on table. And so I'll rewind just in case nobody understands what a Yankee swap is, mm -hmm. but everybody gets a number, so it's one through X. You pull the numbers out, whoever's number one starts, they go over to the group of gifts, they pick a gift out, they open it, they show everybody, here's what I got. Number two goes, they open the gift, they show it, and then they can choose, I want number one's gift or I want to keep mine. And then number three goes and so on and so forth. Until the best everything... number is one, the worst number is two. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. You do not want to be number two. Mm -hmm. Number one, after everybody has opened everything, gets to see everything open and pick what they like the most. And that's how the, mm -hmm. the regular one works. You see the exact same concept for a white elephant, except all the gifts are terrible. So you just find the craziest things that you can get, and that's what a white elephant is. Uh, I can't say the last one I did, because there's a lot of inappropriate things, but... Uh, it's a lot of fun, so for a white elephant, you just go and you find the most bizarre, random things. Uh, it could be things that nobody would like. <laughs> Socks with tacos on them. Socks with what? Tacos on them. Socks with tacos? I might actually I would want this. that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just throwing yeah, out a bad, it could be, bad uh, gift uh, idea. Yeah. Um, plain socks, just tube regular gum. old gym, gym, tube socks. <laughs> tube socks, tube socks, yeah, tube socks. Really. Oh, with, fake, Used with the, um, t the toes? Oh, oh, yeah, those yeah, ones. I think those those are uncomfortable. But uh, those are those two things are always really fun. The Yankee Swap is more traditional. It's there are good gifts in there. Everybody has fun. The White Elephant's are really fun just because it's you, whoever has number one gets to pick either the best of the worst or the worst of the worst and, and have fun with it. So we like doing those. And it, just the amount of things that have come out of those and laughs and pictures and, and, and great stuff. So you can do those. That um, makes it less materialistic, too, yeah. and just fun and, and proactive. Yeah, it, also to that point, too, is set a limit on those. So yeah. it, it could be you know up to $20, or if you're in college and you don't really have that much money, it could be up to $5, and, and so on and so forth. So that way everybody's spending the amount, and they don't feel cheated if they don't get a gift that's not equal yeah. value that they put in. Um, so those things are really fun. And another way, too, uh, we, we talked about being stuck on campus is really if you're really stuck, if there's a snowstorm or there's a, some sort of natural disaster where you, you can't physically leave campus and you were planning on going home and visiting friends and family, luckily we exist with the internet. So hopefully hmm. the internet's still on if it's a natural disaster, <laughs> but uh, you're, you're able to reach out um, even if there's a landline you can call or if you have What's a phone. What's a landline? That is I don't a think local these kids area. know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a very old technique of calling people, but you have that ability to reach out, especially across long distances. If you're in a college, like say you went out to California mm -hmm. and you, your parents live in New Hampshire, and you just don't have the means, the money to go back from California to New Hampshire with the money, mm -hmm. you can still call in and talk to them and it doesn't make you feel as alone. You can even have them put up you know, your... Yep. your your face on the kitchen table <laughs> and, and talk with everybody and you can be there virtually. So I think those things are very important to, yeah. to bring up. Yeah, when I missed Thanksgiving, um, when I was abroad, my family passed me around the table because they had an iPad and they, they put me down and we, we chatted for like a half an hour. Um, and I didn't miss my Thanksgiving dinner because we were six hours ahead of them. Um, or six hours, yeah, ahead of them. Um, but another thing is that if there is a natural disaster like a huge snowstorm and you want to get home and you have a car and it's like a three hour drive, um, don't do it. Be safe. Your parents probably want to see you home for the holidays, but they would much rather you be safe. Don't go like... The keyword was probably. Yeah. <laughs> they probably want to see you home. But like they, they would much rather you be safe and three hours away than you be injured and in a hospital 25 minutes away. Yeah. So like remember the keyword is safety. Um, so if you hear like, oh, there's going to be a blizzard tomorrow and I have a final today so I can't leave. Leave the day after the blizzard, not during the blizzard. Yeah, it's plan out it accordingly mm -hmm. is definitely a key. If you have the opportunity to have a few days off before the holiday starts mm -hmm. or whatever it is and you know that there is a snowstorm coming, don't chance it. Yeah. Just leave when you know it's safe or yeah. leave after it's over. Yeah, I had, um, if you have like finals that end on 
by like Wednesday go home on Thursday if there's going to be inclement weather don't be like oh but I want to hang out with my friends your friends are going to be there in a month when you get back um, go home and see your family get a warm, nice warm cooked me- home cooked meal uh, do some free laundry like there's a lot of benefits to being home see the friends that you haven't seen in three months since you went to college like don't don't put yourself in danger because you want to have like one last night of fun there's going to be so many more nights of fun yeah, but definitely I'd say, especially in today's world, there's so many ways to interact and connect with people. Um, so hopping on FaceTime, even if it's Snapchat and sending funny videos or um, sending funny lenses and filters and things like that, um, but it can make you feel like you're really there and at home or with that person and spending time with them. So um, even though it might not be you know, physically next to each other, um, it's still nice to interact in that way. FaceTiming works for humans and your pets at home. Uh, If you can get somebody willing to just show you your animal, uh, it also works. If I know a lot of people really, really like their dog, or I really love my cat, uh, so it was really nice to see him on the holidays. And you need a human to operate the camera. Uh, <laughs> That's a disclaimer. <laughs> you know. One caveat. I unashamedly um, FaceTimed my pet rabbit many times while studying mm-hmm. abroad. I've seen a lot of pictures. Of yeah. Rabbit, like, she, like, at one point my dad was holding the camera. And, like, it, your pets love seeing you, too. Yeah. So, like, my dad was holding the phone down by her. And she knocked it out of his hand and started, like, licking and, like, giving, like, kisses and everything. And I was like, that's the cutest thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, it, it's FaceTime your dog. <laughs> it's fine. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> Dogs and kids, babies, they all get so excited to see you. <laughs>